Welcome to Mind Pen and Paper. Today I'm going to narrate a story related to Eric Betzig. Eric Betzig was born in 1960 in a town called Ann Arbor in Michigan, USA. He was a smart kid, very enthusiastic about science and technology. Particularly, he was interested in aerospace engineering and wanted to do something very exciting. He also had very supportive family where he was encouraged to do a lot of interesting work in his school years, which also motivated him to go on to get a bachelor's degree from Caltech in 1983. So around that particular time, he also goes to Cornell to get his uh, master's and PhD. In here, he works on a very interesting problem of uh, improving the resolution limit of an optical microscope. So much so that he achieves something quite remarkable. He pushes the limit of the optical microscope all the way to 50 nanometer. And by the way, this is all in the experimental domain and not just a theoretical idea. So in 1989 or so, he joins Bell Labs, which was the then one of the go-to laboratories to do cutting edge science and technology. And uh, he does a lot of interesting work in that particular lab. He also has great colleagues in that particular laboratory. Around 1993 or so, he detects and images single fluorescent molecules and uh, this creates a lot of buzz because this is one of the first times in which uh, a single fluorescent molecule has been imaged and uh, one can visualize a single isolated molecule and this creates a lot of buzz. Indeed, uh, this turns out to be a remarkable achievement and creates a lot of interest in detection and imaging of single molecules. What is surprising is around 1994 or so, Eric Betzig gets delusioned by research community, both in industry and in academia. He feels very negative about the ecosystem in which he is working. And unfortunately, he quits his job out of frustration. This is a very interesting part of his life because uh, in 1996 or so, this motivates him to join his family business where he joins the business of creating high-end machines for servo hydraulic technology. Unfortunately, this business totally flops. It turns out to be a failure. So around 2001, Eric Betzig had multiple failures in his career. He quit a nice job in Bell Labs after extremely great achievement of uh, detecting single molecules and uh, this leads to some kind of a frustration. So in 2002 or so, he returns to his passion of uh, optical microscopy and during this time, he does not have any facility. So what he does is he teams up with his friend Harald Hess and in the living room of Harald Hess, they create something called as photo activated localization microscope, which is acronym for uh, the, the acronym for that particular um, term is called as PAM or, or PAL microscopy. Indeed, this turns out to be an excellent kind of a uh, discovery or rather an invention where they would have created a super resolution optical microscope. Please remember, this is all happening in uh, Harald Hess uh, living room and they have constructed this microscope out of a shoestring budget and they have achieved something remarkable. So this motivates Eric Betzig to search for jobs. And uh, what he does further is that in October 2002 or so, uh, he approaches Howard Hughes Medical uh, uh, Center and uh, they hire him. They take him as a researcher. Around 2006 or so, uh, his lab is fully functional. And what is remarkable is he further develops his idea which he had left in the past and now creates super high resolution microscope. The remarkable as aspect of this achievement is that he is now able to image division of cells in human embryos. This creates 
a huge amount of attention. This is also thanks to a lot of interesting ideas which, which would have been abandoned about 10 years ago because there was not much of technological advance which would have been there and there would have been no specific kind of techniques which would have been developed by then. This all culminates into a wonderful kind of a uh, recognition which is that uh, Eric Betzig along with Stephen Hell and uh, William Warner end up getting a 2014 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. So you can see that uh, what started as a failure has turned out to be now a remarkable kind of an achievement. So the conclusion for this particular kind of episode is to tell you that uh, good ideas take quite some time to mature. It is important to have a lot of patience and perseverance while one is uh, trying to solve a particular problem. The research progress itself is very, very unpredictable. This is something which we have to always keep in, your, in our mind. And uh, it is also important to have a supportive ecosystem. And uh, for example, in this particular case, the US ecosystem was, you know, supportive enough. But there are also many flaws in that particular system because there are many people who would have also lost their jobs who are otherwise outstanding and who probably sometimes even would have worked on a Nobel Prize winning ideas which has happened in the past too. The important inference one can draw is that you can see that Eric Betzig actually had a background in physics and he did some cutting edge biophysics or biology based research and ended up a Nobel Prize in chemistry. So the important aspect and an kind of a critical uh, inference what I can draw is that these disciplinary boundaries are artificial. If you are interested in a particular kind of uh, area of research, you can never predict how it is going to impact other disciplines in, in sciences. So therefore, it is important for us to be open minded and uh, be patient and pursue the idea uh, as long as possible within the limits of course uh, which is uh, given by the ecosystem. I hope this uh, motivates us to look at the uh, important aspect of how research works and there is a lot of lesson in such kind of uh, uh, implication of research where Eric Betzig uh, happens to be a great inspiration and the story of Eric Betzig hopefully also inspires many people who may think science is tough. All we need, as I said, is some kind of a support, not only from an external source, but also internally. Thank you. Bye-bye.